make sure. Oh, my mic is not on. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. We're going to have a conversation with Ms. Marilyn Monroe in the afterlife. I love Marilyn and I haven't spoken to her for a while, so I thought it'd be a good idea. A great opportunity to do that. Hello, can you come on in, dear? Love to chat with you tonight. Recording this particular audio on December 4th, 2021. She's saying the fifth is significant. Is December 5th significant for Marilyn Monroe? I don't know. December 5th. She's making an, a comment about that. I'm not sure what that is. Hmm. Oh, and she just told me she likes my jacket. Oh, thank you. The leopard print. Oh, very nice. She's saying something about having shoes like that. Does she have shoes like that? Like heels like that? Little flat shoes, something like that? Little shoes like that? I missed you too. She was on the life side. She meant, yeah, I missed you too. Yeah, we really haven't spoken for a while. So give us some advice about love. Let's talk about love. Can we talk about love and heartache and relationships? And, well, let's talk about something more pleasant, she says. <laughs> let's talk about love, falling into love, she says. Okay, all right, let's do that. Go ahead. I, I think that she asked me, why do I ask? I think that the reason in part I bring this topic is because it feels like I've been working on this concept of love just in terms of what does it mean like self-love and a union within self and knowing that in order to be able to be present in all of our relationships and more fully participate in our lives as a whole, it's important to have that relationship with ourselves and it's hard to create that. It, it definitely takes effort and it has to be conscious. And so if you can talk to us a little bit about love just in general, that'd be good. I know you like to talk about love. She says, I talk about it though, but, but Bridget, she says, but Bridget, I talk about it, about other people, others, she says, I understand love when it comes to others. And she says, I understand it in the form of attraction and the savvy that it takes to flirt, to attract and to draw in, utilizing all of the she's saying feminine it's like feminine energy she's making me feel very sensual <laughs> around the collarbone and the throat very she's like this very feminine she says the feminine just the simple simple subtle things that are very attractive very sex sexy very sensual so she says um it's like a perfume the way she says the energy can be used to attract or entice. It's like an invitation, she says. And she says, however, that can be misused and misunderstood very much. Yes, yes, very much misunderstood, very much misused by both sexes, both genders in any kind of relationship, she says. It can be misused and misunderstood. Okay, talk about that a little bit. That's interesting. She says, it's a sex appeal. It's the unspoken attraction or attractor that draws someone to you and that creates an interest in you, something that you have to offer. It's that hidden or unseen value. Sometimes it looks really obvious, like uh, someone's body, for example. She says, and the body, for example. And she says, I misunderstood the value of my body as my commodity as the one thing that others saw of me and desired from me. However, I used that. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And it's not to say that you shouldn't use whatever you have that has value to be able to gain whatever it is that you feel purpose on purpose with or a purpose for. And she says, it's not about judgment. 
She's not about judging. It's not about judgment. It's about understanding that, that if you have something and you want something and you have something to trade for that or to, that sounds bad to say that in terms of body. I don't mean it disrespectfully, you guys. I do not mean it that way at all. But she's saying, you have to think about the times that I lived in and how this is true of Hollywood. And it's true today. She says, the body is a commodity. It is. The body is a commodity. And she says, I know that's going to upset very many people, but it is truly what I had and what I was able to use. And I, I'm going to challenge you a little bit on that. I feel like there's also an energy about you, an essence about you, an aura that makes that something special. Can you talk about that? That's something special. And she says, um, yes, energy. Yes, yes, it would be energy, Bridget. That's accurate. That's, that's what it would be. That's what, that's right. That's right. That magnetism, that law of attraction, the magnetism, she says. I say law of attraction. She says magnetism. Yes. And so to what means or what, what result were you looking to achieve? And she says, I wanted to be in front of all of the people who loved me. I wanted the love. And I wanted to not let anyone down, to be there for my fans and to give the people what they want. And then she says, the presentation of me, the performance of the persona of me. And I felt as though I received love, a great deal of love from all of the strangers who watched the movies or listened to me sing. They loved me and I felt that love. And I hope that they felt mine. And it was by other standards, maybe something, you know, one of the feminists, she says the feminist movements would maybe judge me, would judge me, maybe, might judge me to say that I used my body in ways that weren't a respectable or with dignity, yet I would say that I utilized exactly what I had. And for that, I would fault no one. And I can't say that my life was good or bad. It just was a life to the best of my ability. And I really did. And she says, I really did appreciate all of my fans. That's the love. That's the love that I had, that I got. She says, that's the love that I know. So you see, I can understand love. And she says, in ways that are maybe different than what you might think, but they're not bad, they're just different. And then she says to me, oh my gosh, I'm having a little bit of a conversation in my head with her. And she says to me, you can have more than one love, Bridget. You can have more than one love. So it is possible to love yourself. And, and in reality, that would be extremely important, yes. I don't know that I achieved that in my lifetime. I was a bit misguided, yes. But it's possible to love yourself and probably the best way to go about understanding love and knowing love would be to love yourself. And it's very, very easy to love yourself through the eyes of others who adore you, who adore you and appreciate you and can see what you have to offer and just be so grateful. And I could feel that that was real for me. The audience, yes, that was real. But in romance, and romantic love, quite different, very different. I saw the vision for me as family, the dream of the, being a mother and, and having a good dad for my children and making dinner and letting the children play in the backyard and calling them in. And I could envision a perfect, most idyllic love. I thought that I may have had that with Joe or Arthur, but it just was not possible for me to do that. 
which was very, very painful for me. And it did cause a great deal of harm to my, my mental capacity. And that's very public for me. But yet all of my fans still loved me. And I was still able to take care of myself to the best of my ability and to show up to work and to bring to my performance that which my fans would want. Yes. Yes, very much. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's talking, she's showing me images of Joe. He was not a perfect man. But in his way, he loved me. And he tried to be with me. And it was so much, it was so much, you know, it just wasn't quite a fit for him. And I don't fault him for that. I'm not angry with him for that. He was someone I could always rely upon if I needed help to come to my side, to rescue me. It's so romantic, isn't it? It's too bad we just couldn't live together, that things didn't work out that way. Would you say he was the love of your life? Yes, right away she says yes, yes. But yet he was kind of abusive and you had so many relationships where people took advantage of you and it was abusive and just abusive power. And can you talk about that? Like, how does that even fit with love? How can that exist? How can someone be so cruel to you or abusive to you and there's still love there? How is that possible? Oh, she says, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I only know for me, I didn't know different. I didn't know any different, Bridget. I didn't understand that. I felt as though I caused the anger and the rage. She says, she shows me rage. She shows me rage, but she says anger. I caused the anger. I, I was a bit much. She's blaming herself, which I really have a hard time with as a woman. Or I'm like, Mirror, don't blame yourself. It is. It's, it's, it's what I know. It's what I knew. It's how I understood a relationship. Don't you see? It's all the perspective of the person. And I didn't know different. And, and, and so she says, but, and so I, I can only say that I was so much, too much, too much. That hits home, you guys, for me a little bit. I'm like, oh, oh, the love thing and the relationships and the self-love. and the... So Marilyn, you didn't love yourself. Did you love yourself? Oh, I tried. I tried. It was so different then. It's not like it is now. It's not, it's not, it's so contemporary. <laughs> it's so contemporary, this, this concept of self-love. It's contemporary. It's so modern. But you were a strong, independent woman. Yes. She says, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I suppose at my time I was. And I just simply wanted to be treated fairly. That's it. That's it. Wow. Oh. Ooh, oh, chills, you guys. It's the evening right now. So I'm a little, I am a little tired, but it's exhausting being Marilyn Monroe, she says. It's exhausting. At the end of the day, it would be nice just to be a missus. A missus. I would have loved that. A simpler life. Perhaps, maybe next time.
she says. Wow, her energy is really easy to personify. <laughs> I can really grab it and take it in. Wow, okay, this was all over. I hope this is helpful for you guys. Talking about love and relationships a bit, self-love a little bit. It's something I'm personally working on, relationship with myself. And so in deepening that and embodying that love more, more broadly and more fully. And so I appreciate the conversation. It, it, it does trigger me some of the concepts about being in relationship as a woman and relationship in the balance of power stuff, old Hollywood vibes and the kind of masculine dominant energy. That's hard a little bit for me personally to just kind of feel that, but we all know that things are different for different people and everyone has different experiences. I hope this isn't too triggering for you as you're watching it, but we appreciate you sharing your authentic self, Marilyn, with us and your reflections and perspectives about love and what that is from your own lens. So thank you for that, dear. Appreciate it. I see a lovely light pink rose energetically, which is compassion, lots of compassion. And also the color of self-love or self-care actually. So thank you for that, my friend. So this is Bridget. You've been watching me on Above Life channel as I've been channeling Miss Marilyn Monroe from the afterlife. I hope that I've inspired your spirit today and given you some hope with this conversation with Marilyn from the afterlife and and encourage you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.